It's a good day to be a scientist that hates plastic. Let's go over some of the facts and figures from this review article from The Lancet, Countdown on Health and Plastics. Released ahead of the Global Plastics Treaty, half of all the plastic that exists on Earth today was produced starting at least in 2010. The annual rate of plastic consumption has increased 230 fold from 1950 to 2019, and that is expected to triple into 2060. While China is the largest producer of primary plastics, North America and Europe are the highest consumers of plastic goods. In 2020, plastic production was responsible for the release of 2.45 gigatons carbon dioxide equivalent of greenhouse gases. With no interventions to plastic production, that is expected to triple by 2050 and reach 6.78 gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent greenhouse gases. Oh, but we're not even talking about how it affects you yet because I'm sure you don't care about the environment that much. There are more than 16,000 chemicals that can be present in your plastic, in your plastic. Majority of those chemicals are not actually polymerized into the polymer matrix. They're not part of the plastic. They're just freely bound and floating around in the polymer matrix. So when that material starts to degrade, those additives are ultimately released into the environment. One very important source of plastic exposure for us are food contact chemicals. It is known that food contact chemicals leach byproducts and additives into the food that they come into contact with. Very extensively studied. Despite being produced en masse, hazard data are not publicly available for more than two thirds of known plastic, plastic-like chemicals. Approximately 75% of plastic chemicals examined in a systematic evidence map found that they have not been assessed for human health feeling really validated today, feeling really validated. Of the plastic chemicals for which data are available, 75%, which equates to more than 4,200 substances, have been found to be highly hazardous due to their toxic effects, persistence, bioaccumulation, and mobility. Almost 1,500 of these chemicals are carcinogenic, mutagenic, or toxic to reproduction, and more than 1,700 are toxic to specific organs, such as the liver. 47 chemicals are recognized as endocrine disruptors in the EU, and more than 1,800 have been shown to be released from plastics and have a high potential for human exposure. Those are the ones we know. It's suggested that micro and nanoplastics can cross a lot of human tissue barriers, including the very important, vitally essential blood brain barrier, which keeps a lot of things out from the brain. That study has to be repeated because the methods for detecting the microplastic particles were a little fuzzy for the size that they were trying to detect, but it, it, there, there is evidence. There's that one study that suggests that they might be able to. There might be plastics small enough that are able to cross the blood brain barrier. These microplastics can disrupt the structure and function of cells and the structure and function of tissue due to their physical presence and toxic properties of their own polymer matrix. So not only the plastic itself, but what is in the plastic, like the additives. Yeah, microplastic particles have those additives too. Microplastics are literally just small pieces of plastic. It's the same material. I could keep going. I want to talk about how this impacts different areas of the world and how plastic pollution affects a lot of lower income communities. Also, I want to talk about they have health impacts for plastic production workers and also waste pickers. And I haven't even fully talked about all of the microplastic harms or the environmental harms. I just gave like some random statistics that I've picked out <laughs> that are interesting. So let me know if you want me to talk more about this paper because there's a lot I could say.